Rashid Khan lost about, had a score of minus 160 in terms of luck runs that went against him. So you can only imagine how much more effective he would have been. Or perhaps if the rub of the green goes his way this time, we can all imagine what he is going to do in IPL 2019. So this was uh, just a brief uh, overview of what luck is and how we have gone into luck events in terms of the luck index. A lot of this is based on simulations and forecast because for all of this, there are, we, we imagine an event that hasn't actually happened. We are actually simulating something based on certain factors, based on algorithms taking into view batting, bowling strengths and all of it. Which brings us to Forecaster, which is again a tool to see the win percentages of teams, to see how, how a team matches up against another team. So let's, let's just go through a video once again and then I'll take you through the Forecaster in a little more detail. It's IPL season. You're watching your favorite team batting in the fifth over, chasing down a big total. Wouldn't it be nice if you could find out how likely they are to win the match, especially if they are up against a great bowling attack? Say hello to ESPN Crick Info Forecaster. At any stage of the innings, Forecaster uses a powerful algorithm to predict the win probability and the likely score of the batting team. What's more, the forecaster can predict the runs and chances of a wicket falling in the next over. These numbers predict which opposition bowler is likely to bowl, the phase of the game, head-to-head -head battles and a number of other facts to help fans understand the T20 format better. Let's consider the Rajasthan Royals versus Sunrisers Hyderabad match from IPL 2018. Royals seemed to be in a comfortable position requiring 50 runs from 30 balls. Statistically, teams have won 60% of such matches in the IPL. But considering Rashid Khan had two overs left, the forecaster gave a 41% win probability for the Royals. And as predicted, Royals managed to score just 38 runs and lost the match. This IPL season, get over by over predictions at any phase of the game with ESPN Crick Info Folk. Right, so that is the forecaster. So we anticipated that the first question that would come from this is, so what are your success rates? How often, or how correctly do you predict the results? So we thought we'd just put it to you before you ask the question. At the beginning of a run chase, this is over three seasons, last three seasons of the IPL, we've got 61% results correct in terms of the winning team. And at the, at the 15th over mark, it goes up to 80%. So considering it's T20 cricket, which is so fickle and so unpredictable, I think these are pretty good numbers. So these are all the factors that go into, you no, know, because it's, it's a fairly complex task in terms of, again, predicting how much a team will score. So basically what the algorithm does is uh, look at all the balls remaining, allocate it to batsmen. Similarly allocate, look at the bowlers in the bowling team, do a head-to-head -head analysis, and then get a predicted score. So all of this goes in, taking into account batting strengths, bowling strengths, which is where the cricket intelligence comes in. So what, what gives you the win probability is, again, uh, three different factors. One is the factors that are calculated from the match, and then there is the historical probability of teams from similar situations in terms of similar runs to get in similar balls and similar, similar wickets in hand. How have teams done in the past? And then there is also the batting momentum, which is important in T20 cricket especially, because a few balls here and there can change the way the innings is going. So we look at the last six balls to calculate batting momentum. An example, again, which uh, you saw in the, in the video, brings out the cricket intelligence in the system, because as mentioned, the historical probability of a team winning from that position, 50 runs to get, 30. You have a very high strike rate, and that can kind of influence your numbers. So traditional statistics, like Sambit said earlier, does not really work for the shorter fo shortest format. So before I dive deep into smart stats, we have a small video.
for data enters. Enter smart stats. ESPN Cricket boasts new metric that adds complex to every batting and bowling performance. Smart stats factors in the match situations like when did the batsman come to bat? What target was he up against? Who were the bowlers he was facing? How is his head to head record against those bowlers? Each run scored or conceded, and each wicket taken is given a value based on complex algorithms. The result is a set of smart stats, the true word of every batting and bowling performance. For example, what can tell you the Russian cup and not Andrew Guy should have been the bowling cap holder of the IPO 2018, while Shane Watson's 555 rounds last season were actually worth 644. So, who will be the real top performers of IPL 2019? Follow smart stats on ESPN Cricket to know the answer. Start of the presentation to now. Let's let's hear the question again. Yeah, yeah. Suddenly everyone wants the mic. Rahul Rav is asking the question. Yeah. Somebody playing a shot, in a edge, just misses the stump by this much. Is that counted as luck or no? We we take uh, edge boundaries as one of the factors, because in T20s there is lots of edges. We have considered the boundaries as a luck factor for sure. We also have something called a, a wicket chance, which is slightly subjective, but wherever the, it's uh, based on the scorer's uh, reading of, of for the situation. But if the ball hits the stump and the bails don't fall, we do take that into account. Two of those so one of the things that I do when I'm in commentary, if there's a drop catch or a sharp chance not taken, I look towards Mohandas men and our stats guy. And I ask him, so what have you logged that as in? Is that a drop catch? Or no, 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 drop catch. So for them is if the guy has got his fingertips to the ball, it's a drop catch. Whereas as a cricketer, I look at it differently. It was a great effort, wasn't a drop catch. So is there somebody there in your team who will be able to, you know, rightly log it as a drop catch or, you know, a great attempt? Because somebody might not just make an effort and a catch has been sort of let go while somebody makes an effort and gets his fingertips to it. So how we log it is... Uh what usually happens is we have a group of people who are following the match and unless the chance is very obvious, uh, we come, go back, watch the video and discuss if it has to be locked as and a catch. And in that group there is a representation of uh, everyone from the cricketing community? 
No, not uh, not all, but yeah. Teasing you. From, yeah. from the if, if you found if you found our ball boy, I would advise you to have a few club cricketers and first class players sitting there, because sometimes the view of a guy who has played the game is completely different from, with due respect, uh, intelligent people like you watching. Yeah. Somebody who spent hours on the field has some kind of knowledge that uh, you know. But we next, also time show you, next time we'll surely ping you. So have a representation of everyone. Sure. But Sanjay, we also community. classify catches as uh, easy regulation and uh, uh, regulation tough and a half chance. So not every catch is defined in the same way when we score it. So if we like, I remember MS after a CSK game actually shared with me quietly. Yeah, he, Dwayne Bravo and a simple catch could be brilliant, karta hai, you know, and all that. So you've got to be careful about <laughs> <laughs> the catches that. So we may seem record like that as a half chance, well. perhaps. But yeah, that's a, like we said, that we do discuss it and try to be as accurate as possible. And do you still want us in the panel discussion later after these questions? <laughs> no, no, now to be definitely, no, no. I'll be asking the questions <laughs> at that point. Yeah. That's Ronak's wish. Yeah. No, just Ronak. another one. Like you said, that, that particular game, just going back to the RR uh, CSK game. So Watson gets dropped and then eventually they would have ended up at 172. 172, yeah. hmm. 172, 172 rather than 205 or whatever yeah. it was. And it showed RR back at 140. Is, it, is there an ability to calculate the impact of starting out chasing 172 vis-a-vis -vis starting out chasing 205? You know, just from a psychological point of view as a, as a batsman, that affects you. Yeah. There is no doubt that, you know, 140, you might get closer to 172, yeah. you might not end up at 140. Right. You know, it might happen. I'm just right. saying that, you know, when you start off chasing 205, it's very different to starting off chasing 172. True. Yeah. One of those things. So we not, have not feedback yet. loop in terms of pressure that is that goes into the feedback loop so the values are different when you are chasing 172 for the pressure factor than when we are, you are chasing 140 okay but it, it won't be considered now in half. any more questions from non international cricketers <laughs> they've opened the door let's, nicely let's complete the, the group no, of uh, international players and get ajit to ask a question we have to play it seen the presentation uh, ajit has missed the presentation so he'll <laughs> ask after the questions yeah, he, in fact, Sanjay is suggesting that, uh, Ajit, Sanjay is suggesting an international cricketer should be uh, there to supervise and input the data so that we don't get it wrong. So, our most And also, I'm thinking if Superstats was available to Mumbai Cricket Association selectors, I think they would have done a better job <laughs> selecting the Mumbai team as well. Yeah, the fact is actually that that vacancy is open. So I'm maybe sorry, this is not a fun thing, right? It, it's a serious There are event. only about 42 journalists here. Half of whom are interested in a bite on it, so that's fine, no problem. Any questions yeah, from the collective wisdom of cricket journalism? Yeah. Yeah, George Benoit. Rajesh, uh, the example you gave us about uh, Watson being dropped and then that score, uh, yeah. it should have been, it was 204, simulated uh, scores 172, I think, uh, without revealing trade secrets. Uh, like, how does such a simulation work? Because uh, you like once a catch is dropped, everything is predicted, right? And they could be maybe maybe this oh, question yeah. is actually better put to Professor Agu from Do you want to IIT Madras? Yeah. Would you like to take that on, sir? And go into as much detail as you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <clears throat> we look at the remaining batsmen, and then uh, we look at the typical expected number of balls they have played over a period of time, all through their career. And then from that, we, we have an advanced algorithm which look at how these balls should be apportioned to these guys. And then we have their uh, traditional strike rates from, again, data. And then basically, we compute how much they would have scored. So that would come out to 172 in that case. If you don't understand it, just believe us. <laughs> it's that simple. Anyone else? Question? Except Sanjay, <laughs> except the first row. Is anyone else with a question? OK, I think, uh, thank you very much. So he has a question. There's a question? Sorry. Yes, sir. Please. Uh, so in the super start part, you said that it's uh, difficult. Uh, sorry, it's uh, difficult to get the batsman out in the initial 10, 15 runs, rather than when he has scored a 50 or 60. But the conventional wisdom of cricket says that after he has scored a 50 or 60, he's set. So it's difficult to get him out after he has scored a 60-70 runs rather than in the initial part when he's looking to get his innings. 
going. So I didn't say it was difficult. I said we reward bowlers who actually get batsmen out early in the innings. We also reward batsmen, bowlers who dismiss batsmen slightly later on, provided there's some context in the match. If he's already scored 75, 80 and you need five runs to win, if you get him out, it doesn't really matter. But if you get him out and still the match is alive and there are like a lot of cases in T20, especially good set batsmen get out in the 15th or 16th over. And then you have a new batsman coming in and then there's, it's very hard for them to start the innings. So if you get him out that time, we take into account. Sorry? So it's, it's the impact of getting a good player out early. So it's the impact of getting a good player out early, not how difficult it is. If you get an A.B. De Villiers out in the first 10 balls, the amount of damage that he could have done, you already, you know, would have, brought. Would have already done. Yeah, so the, the reward that the bowler should get for that should be more to that extent than someone who's got him out after he has already scored 70, 80, which in some case, cases he might have already done the damage and sealed the game for the team. Okay. So that's, that's the point really. Okay. Thank you. Doesn't know if that amateur cricket uh, thing that get a batsman that you don't want out, keep him for longer and that you don't factor up for certain batsmen that shouldn't play 2020 cricket. No, we don't do that. Okay. That could happen. But that, that could happen. The results. That's the next step. It's cost his team by. All right. Big thank you to Rajesh Gaurav and Shiva, our stats editor S. Rajesh and senior data analysts Shiva and Gaurav. It's good to see uh, more and more people come in as the morning goes on. So again, for those of you that missed the first bit, welcome. And it's a big day for us as we launch ESPN Crick Info Superstats. You've already heard in some detail uh, what uh, Rajesh, Gaurav, and uh, Shiva had put together along, of course, with the wonderful people from IIT Madras. And now I think, uh, I think Sanjay and Rahul are so warmed up, as you already saw. They're itching. Yeah, yeah, there are many questions. No, but go for it. No holes barred. If you if you can't say what's on your mind at a Cricket Info event, then where will you say it? So, better here than a BCCI commentary box, Mr. Manjrekar. So, let's go for it here. Right. Uh, <laughs> so, we hope to have the uh, enlightenment of your attention for a little while. And then we'll also open the floor to some questions. So, if I may invite one by one the panelists to join me. Like we said, that this could not have been possible without the efforts and the leadership of some of the people from IIT Madras. And we've got amongst us a man who spearheaded this entire project, a professor of the Department of Chemical Engineering. His research areas include reinforcement learning, big data, process analytics. So this was right up his alley. He's got his PhD in chemical engineering at the Purdue University. And he's, a he's been a professor at the Texas Tech University, the Clarkson University in New York, as well as IIT Bombay, uh, and, and a hardcore cricket fan at the start and finish of it all. Please welcome Professor Raghunathan Rangaswamy. Good luck. Come, please, sir. Uh, now, it's a day of numbers, so maybe numbers is the best way to introduce them. All of you are from the fraternity and the industry, so I'm not going to waste too much time, but 111 international appearances through the 80s and 90s. He doesn't care about that number as much as the three million followers that he has on Twitter, as also, and that he engages with regularly, as also the millions of copies that his book recently has sold and will continue to sell. He's a respected voice in the broadcasting field. He's a true friend and patron of ESPN Crick Info. Please give it up for Sanjay Manjrekar. Not bad, no? I mean, he needs seriously no introduction, but it's so much fun introducing him. So it's more my pleasure than, you know, saying things that all of you already know. 509 international appearances over 16 years, 24,208 runs. All of them were smart. Let's, be, let's, let's make that clear. 48 international hundreds, and he didn't count one of them. 146 international 50s, always played for the team first did what his team needed, took the gloves when his team needed, led when it needed, followed, shuffled up and down the order, and again, a true patron and friend of ESPN Rick Info, former India captain, and no words to describe him that'll do justice. Give it up for Raul Dravid. I left out the T20 achievements, which we'll come to. Yeah, let's not forget that. And of course, if I may, to just complete the panel, our editor-in-chief, who all of you might know well, 
One of the nicest men in cricket, somehow. Sambit Bal. Please, sir. Okay, so this is going to be fun because uh, Rahul and Sanjay have already set the stage. Everyone's mic's working well, I hope. Check out. Just say something. One. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so let me first ask both of you just first thoughts on what you've just seen patiently and attentively heard. What do you make of it, Rahul? Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's really interesting. And I, I think I've had this conversation with, uh, with, with Sambit a lot, especially in relationship to T20 cricket, you know, mm. sort of just um, having played a little bit of T20 cricket at the back end of my career and then getting involved, uh, you know, with the, sort of the auction process and, and coaching, mentoring teams. Mm. Uh, I think one of the frustrations really for, for a lot of us, if you can call us on the other side of the, of the fence, so to speak, the... You know, people involved in, in coaching and setting up teams. And when you sort of read articles or you read comments about T20 cricket, yeah. you sometimes felt that, you know, people were not getting it. Or there was a sense of frustration that sometimes the stats that were being used were quite outdated. The comments were based on numbers and stats that were sometimes being used to sort of use for one-day cricket or use for test matches. And, and people would, you know, use the sort of the set... Uh, mm. stats that, that had been used or the set averages or strike rates. And to you and, that didn't do justice to the It didn't story. do justice, I think, to sometimes as coaches, not only for, I guess, on reading of the game, but you are looking for something more as well. If you're looking to analyze a game, if you're looking for more information on a game, if you're looking as a coach to make decisions on a game sure. or decisions on selection, uh, you sometimes felt that, you know, the, the old stats didn't do it. Mm. So there was a sense of frustration. So it's really good that, you know, uh, people are looking at this very differently. It'll be really interesting to see how this goes and, yeah. and, and, and how this, what this leads into. But, but yeah, definitely that over the last few years we've seen uh, people definitely recognize that the T20 game is different yeah. and it needs different metrics, it de needs different statistics and it's, you know, it's fantastic to see people are doing the work behind uh, getting that uh, out. Before I move on, I'd like to clarify that in no way are we asking either Rahul or Sanjay to endorse the product mainly because we can't afford them for endorsement. <laughs> but generally, that we're asking for honest views here, and we're talking about the marriage between data and cricket. But uh, yes, Sanjay, just first thoughts? Actually, my worst fear has come true today. The, the nerds are taking over the game. This I is your worried worst about fear. This. <laughs> this is your worst fear. Yes, I mean, this was my worst fear. It's finally happened. But on a serious note, uh, you know, I think Paul King is here from Star. Star had done a show three, four years back, called The Guru versus The Geek. The Guru so versus The Geek? The Geek. Hmm. Guru is that cricket romantic who's played the game, has no time for numbers. And then you have The Geek, who's only about numbers. And I was given the name of being Gurik, because I was both. And to be very honest, I mean, I'm fascinated by numbers. When I'm doing commentary, my best friend is the stats man sitting next to me. So, I've always... Like the support of numbers, these days I'm even more confident with my criticism of people because I use data as well to back it up. So that helps. The most important thing is how you balance or how you use the numbers to come to the right conclusions on the game and performance, selection, everything. Let's not forget with every Rahul Dravid, the coach, with time for numbers and his intelligence, there's also Chandrakant Pandit. Hmm. He's a very successful coach two consecutive Ranji titles, who doesn't know how to reboot the but, but speaking specifically of the role of numbers in T20 cricket, where Rahul no, says that the... So but there again, Mahindra Singh Dhoni is an example. Yeah, we'll come if you to, yeah. ask me, I have a lot of time for numbers. I'll talk purely as a commentator as well. You know, people have been hearing the same gyan from us for the last 10, 15 years. They want something new. Hmm. And what's new is these kind of things, the revelatory numbers and performances of players. And our, our coverage, it comes at the bottom of the screen. And these are excellent pertinent numbers. Suresh Raina a few years back had this weakness against the short ball. And then a little stat comes at the bottom that says that he scored most of his runs of the pull shot. So what was happening actually was more and more bowlers were bowling short to him and he had learned to score of the hmm. pull shot. So I found that extremely you know, exciting and I wanted that little scroller at the bottom to be <coughs> center stage. So that's me. Okay, Rahul, you as wanted a to say something there? No, yeah. I mean, I'm just using this, but, but the, 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 just from someone who sort of looks at these things a little bit as a coach differently, yes, you might have said Suresh Naina has scored more runs of the short ball because he's been given the short ball. 
But can you calculate how many would he have scored if we had actually pitched them up? He might have even scored more than he, he did with the short ball. Mm -hmm. So while the number is nice to tell you that, yeah, Suresh Rana doesn't now have a weakness against the short ball, you sh so you, sh you, you might still need to bowl short to him, even though he scored the most runs of the short ball. Yeah. Because if you pitch it up, that 100 could become 200 sure. strike rate. You know, so I, you know these things are, are Numbers incredibly. Can be looked at so it's yeah. for me. I think the it's the interesting thing is, and, and Sanjay, you know, I think it's not about nerds versus you know geeks. I think the critical thing for me are, is the people who are going to be able to make the best use of these numbers. Hmm. How you read these numbers, what you get out of these numbers, is going to be funny the enough. One, those people include it's, Sanjay only. Yeah. So yeah. so when he says, what is the word? You, what is the use word for yourself? Guru, no, guri, 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 so the guri, guri so or, or the people I think who are able to make sense of these numbers are going to be the most valuable people in the future. Hmm. It's not the guys who are, you will get a lot of numbers thrown at yeah, you. Absolutely. But yeah. the guys who can make sense of these numbers is the future. Okay, brilliant. Uh, Sambit, why the need for smart stats though? Why did Crickinfo decide to? I mean, I mean, I think we sort of through the course of the morning, we have spoken about why we. We have had a lot of people in the morning. Why so we you needed just, smart yeah. stats? As we have said that uh, there are three forms of the games, yeah. and you needed some some something to equalize that performances. Up in the in the uh, in the auction list or the auction uh, this thing, and uh, if you just looked at Brad Hodge's numbers vis-a-vis hmm. uh, -vis the IPL. You know, at that stage, he had played at KKR, he had played, I think, in, in Kochi. Uh, he had played for two or three other teams. And his numbers weren't great. I think he was strike rate, his strike rate was 105 or something like that. And his average wasn't good, his numbers weren't great. And, you know, we looked at him, but one of the interesting things, as we were looking at his numbers and we looked at it closely and we looked at why he's so sort of successful in, in say, you know, overseas or, or in the BBL. Uh, one of the things was that he really struggled and his strike rate really came down because you know, he struggled against left arm spin hmm. for, uh, you know, for one thing. He struggled against left arm spin. The two venues that he played in in those days, you know, not the Kolkata now, yeah. that, uh, you know, the Kolkata of the early days of the IPL, which, one, was, yeah. which is to turn and square, sort of yeah. was still which is to turn square. Yeah. Uh, and he had played... No, no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the one, uh, and, and at Kochi, we were, you know, turning wickets. Yeah. And, and so we looked at those numbers and said, maybe, you know, there's something to it. And then just looked at the position in which we would try and protect him and bat him in a position wherein one of the things we did notice as well is Brad Hodge's ability to play quality fast bowling sure. was exceptional. Right. His ability to take down and he had in that his career obviously a very good batsman, very successful batsman for a reason because he could take down quality fast bowling. So we chose to pick him in the auction and bat him only in the last five overs of a game. A lot of people looked at us and said, you know, why are you doing this? This is yeah. a guy who's so averaged so much. Look at his average in T20 cricket. Look at his numbers. But, you know, nobody was looking at it sort of that carefully, nor was Brad Hodge. When, I, when, we first, <laughs> when we first told him, you're only going to bat in the last 30 balls of a game, he looked at me and said, you know, why do you want me to do that? Give me, you know, coach, give me, let me bat at number three, I'll score you 450 runs in a season. So if I you, said, I don't sorry, want if you to tell him that data suggests you're not good against left arm spin, does he buy into that? Or not initially, he... not no. easily. Hmm. That's, I think, the challenge. That's where I think more and more stats and more and more research into stat yeah. is going to help. Because it's going to help coaches to be able to convince players that that's not, at that time we were just, we didn't have the of help course. of a lot of these things. We were just going on some of the basics numbers and yeah. stats that we had. And, and we were able to convince him that his batting in the last five overs was best for him and best for the team in the IPL. It might not be the same sure. in the BBL. Sure. It was best for him in the IPL. You know, he won us a few games. He didn't buy into it initially. I said, I don't want your 450 runs that you'll get me at three. I want 200 runs at 160 Six, strike rate sure. against Dale Stain, Mitchell Johnson, Ravi Rampal, those, these kind of guys, Malinga at the back end. Brilliant. And he won us two or three games. He played for Australia in a T20 World Cup, batting at number six in, in Bangladesh. He got back into the Australian team. Yeah. You know, I think just stuff like that, you know, it was really stuff that was really, really okay, interesting. I like and we felt at that stage people were, you know, I think people have moved on from that. People right. are much looking at stats very, very better now and much more. Okay, so that actually takes a nice discussion because there are two aspects to the use of data in 2020 cricket. One, when it comes to in-game, in-match tactics and the other on how much it might facilitate the larger picture for franchises, auction tables, scouting and whatnot. Sanjay rightly points out there are still split schools of thought on the value of data for 2020 cricket. It's quite, quite well known that MS Dhoni is not as big a buyer into it. I don't think Virat Kohli either or RCB is the kind that employ a lot into data. I know that you clearly seem like you rely on it or rather you are 
where you welcome it to facilitate a lot of cricket argument. Where do you stand on the importance of it when it comes to managing 2020 cricket, in-game and outside? I think we need to again strike that balance. So mm. I think just using it blindly with numbers, also there's a human element to this. I think you can never forget there's a human element to teams. When you're managing teams and you're coaching teams, there's a human element to it. You can't just go blindly to a player and say, this is what the numbers say, so you shouldn't play. Mm. Or this is what the numbers say in this situation. You've got to manage an environment. You've got to manage a team. Sure. And that's, you know, so that's why I feel that, you know, geeks will never, or, or just play numbers. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Sorry. <laughs> you know, I, I will never be able to completely take over yeah. because you will, it, it's, it, it, it does, teams don't run like that. Teams don't yeah. work like that. There's an emotional like, element to it. Gaurav tweeted recently, how long is a bad patch? You know, how many matches constitutes a bad patch for a player to be dropped? And I told him that you can't quantify it. You can't put a number on it saying, Six matches, you know, it's failure, it's time to drop a player. Because for Rohit Sharma, as you've seen, it's 15 matches. And for Ambati Raidu, it could be four or five, so. No, but what I'm trying to think is, if Brad Hodge would have been playing for CSK, if MS only would have even fathomed this idea no. so at actually, all. He wouldn't, he maybe would he doesn't need captain. to. He would be a better captain if he had this support as well, I truly believe. But both Virat Kohli and Dhoni are such personalities, I don't think there's anyone in the squad who would have... Uh, uh, but there's the see, to go and convince them otherwise from the kind of principles of cricket that they have. But even as a coach, you know, sometimes you also want captains who are not just going, like I said, there's a human element to it. Yeah, yeah the numbers might say that bowl X on a particular day, but a captain on the field can get a feel that he's actually not for it, up for it today. You know, he's, you, numbers can't quantify how someone's, whether he's having, carrying a niggle. Numbers can't quantify whether someone is not feeling up for it on that particular day. Sure. You can sense that Fair on the enough. field. So there's a, there's a mix of both. So as a coach, you know, I, I like, you know, as a coach sometimes sitting outside, if captains take a gut call on the field, you sometimes do back them, as long as you know that of course. it's not just doing it blindly. So yeah, I think Dhoni and, and Dhoni yeah. especially, I think he gets that, he gets the feel of that better than Like you mentioned in this also, the bowlers to come, if it's Bumrah and somebody, Rashid Khan, then you make the <coughs> difficulty factor that much higher. So I quietly asked him, what about Bumrah's recent form? Mm. He has this reputation of being a game changer historically, but what if in the last three games, he's gone for plenty of runs and his form in this particular match it's taken into coming account. into, yeah. You know, it's taken into and account. he told me that also yeah, is yeah. taken into account. So, wonderful. Uh, speaking of recent form, just if we could... Balancing factor because I think, you know, for a long time, and, and, and rightly so, I think India had performed really well over the last couple of years. Mm. It was almost this, uh, there was a little bit of talk that we are almost going to walk in there and just win this yeah. World Cup, you know, very easily because we are the number one team and we've been dominating the, the uh, sort of one day cricket for the last couple of years. But I don't think anything's changed from my perspective, you know, watching this series. Mm. I always felt that, yes, we are still going to go in as one of the favourites. But it's going to be tough. It's going to be competitive. You know, there are going to be some good teams out there. I think, I think there was a bit of a notion that yeah, we're just going to walk there and, and we're going to win easily. I think that's a good thing. So it's maybe a good thing. You know, better now that, than yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a good thing. It's kind of just reminded us that no, we're going to have to play very, very well to win. Okay, coming back to the chat, uh, you, I like what you said about managing the players. Now, I, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, the two of you strike me as the kind of people that didn't mind having a look at numbers to try and create, validate, or further make a cricketing point. Is the modern day player as receptive to data and numbers or do they just dismiss it? How hard was it? Do you find different characters? Again, as we're getting better and better at numbers and more and more, you know, geeks and, and we have to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we have to acknowledge that. You Geek know, is as being said as a positive <laughs> thing here. In this so environment. Wear it as a badge of honor. In this environment, yeah. Yeah. it's a very positive yeah. thing. <laughs> the, other than the six guys from here, from IIT, I'm not sure many people here understand cos and tan theta and all of that stuff. <laughs> I, I, it lost me at 9th standard boss. So, uh, and, you know, IIT is a new thing for us in the cricketing world. So here, they, here, here, they, here they're legends. Oh. In this company, you know, with journalists and artistic people, yeah. these guys are legends. He's used to IIM company more than yeah. IIT. Till now, we had representation of IIM in yeah. cricket. Now, finally, we have IIT. Harsha. Harsha. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Harsha. <laughs> <laughs> Beg your pardon. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, but coming, coming back to it. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes, yeah, so where was I? Uh, about, <laughs> sorry, but about geeks and... Yeah, yeah. Cricket. No, so I think as more and more people are putting time and research into this, yes. and more and more people are mm -hmm. doing stuff like, you know, this and the kind of work Rajesh and all do, I think it becomes more and more believable and more and more trustable for players as well. Right. You know, I think then players can look at this and, and say, yeah, you know, yes, you're not just throwing around numbers at me, there's some... There's stuff gone mm. on behind this that makes sense. If you're, if you're telling me that, yeah, I might be averaging so much, but actually, at this phase in the game, 
my your strike rate wasn't good enough. Yeah. You know why wasn't it good enough? You know, no, my strike rate was 140. But yeah, but you know, in the critical phase in the game between eight and 12, I'm just giving you an example. Sure. This kind of conversations we sometimes have. between eight and 12. Actually, you needed to be at a much quicker strike rate vis-a-vis -vis somebody else in the game or vis-a-vis -vis what the opposition has done. You can have those conversations once, you know, people you have, have something to back it up. You have something to back it up. Yeah. So that's what's interesting for me and that's why... Just to, uh, yeah, finish. No, no, no. Just a quick question to uh, yeah. Rabu. Yeah. Rabu. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to call him geek and honest no, Don't face. say that. No, no, that's Rabu. okay. Yeah. But this is very meant happy. more for the fans and television viewers than cricket teams. Even no, there are, there are no. I think there are two or three things here. One is, of course, we when we judge the quality of a performance, I think it's for everybody. It's for the fans, it's also for the cricket team, the super stats, the real strike rates or the economy rates. I'm sure it will be very, very useful for teams because every team now employs uh, a data analysts and they use, they use all this data already. So it will be, uh, will not, you know, uh, it takes us maybe, to maybe there's a uh, business there for Ramesh to take forward maybe yeah <laughs> takes this, but but this takes actually to a nice part of just the broadcast value of data you know which is i think i don't know how much data is used to drive a story that the fans would obviously be interested yeah. in and how much the cricketers may or may not endorse and i think, I you think stand it's, at a it's nice ready balance for uh, television is ready to enhance the viewers experience because yeah. at the moment i think uh, we are all sort of frantic in our efforts to put the show on the road on air and months, no, as commentator, and then yeah. obviously, so, uh, ultimately, it's the it's just, just, no, it's just let this go. <laughs> okay, come on. Because see, he is very conscious about why we are all here. So ultimately, okay. all, ultimately, ultimately it's a storytelling tool for yes. the fans. So, so you can we can tell better stories with the numbers. I we have never going to say that these numbers are absolute. Sure. We will always recognize that there's skill and there's human instinct and there is something that I mean, that when, almost goes without saying. Yeah, yeah, and when you when you of course forecast the probability. Yeah. We, we're never going to claim that it's going to be uh, 100%. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. It'll, it'll See, numbers are so important. For example, a very s simple evidence of Vivian Richards as the batsman in the 70s and 80s. You know, great batsman, mm -hmm. everyone said, one of the top batsmen in the world, cricket. But the distance between him and the other players around his time, you know, I, people just imagined it. Then you look at a very simple stats guru or, you know, strike rate. Gordon Greenwich in his one day career, Guess what his strike rate was? 67 or 68. Strike rate in 50 overs cricket. Hmm. Vivian Richards in the 70s and 80s and a bit of 90s, strike rate of 90 in that time. So that is how you sort of convince people. So I don't go on air or write columns about saying Viv Richards is the ultimate. You put these numbers and the numbers speak for themselves. So do you, I mean, it's incredible. So to wind up this part of the chat on just the value of data and broadcast. With the way broadcast seems to be reinventing more toys, more gadgets, touch screens and whatnot, how big a role do you see data playing in it? Do you see, and are you, are you uh, of the opinion that commentators from whichever era must also buy into it, welcome it, therefore that will enhance the storytelling? Sometimes so that comes there in. There are generally six or seven commentators in any coverage. And there are at least two or three or maybe four who are interested in data. Hmm. So you'll get that kind of balance. Well, let's say I let's say Superstats comes into the commentary I, I'll box be very tomorrow. Excited. I'll be very it'll take excited. a little time. It, it'll, it'll have to be welcomed first by the commentator for then for that be picked and told in a story. You'd be keen on that? Very keen a because I've always element. talked about impact. And when I look at 50 overs cricket and when you took, uh, look at the top batsman in 50 overs cricket, we look at aggregate runs. Yeah. And that is something that I hate about 50 overs cricket because there's no Yuvraj Singh there in that list. I mean, he was one of the greatest one-day batsmen that the world has seen. But you only look at aggregate runs when you look at top one-day batsmen. And these are guys who had the clout. And they you had it easy, the these top, top one, three. Two, and yeah, three. The clout, so yeah. If you bat at number one, two, and three, you will end up becoming a great one-day batsman, which is a wrong way to look at a great one-day batsman. You, you go with that? You bat. need to have the clout to keep batting top three, one-day yes. cricket through your career? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'll finish with more. It's also partly performance, but, yeah. but yeah, I mean, I agree yeah. in the sense, I do agree with Sanjay in the sense that, yeah. and I think people are beginning to see that. Yes, now. The big yes, people, that's and that's where numbers are really helping. I'll finish with one Absolutely. sentence here. I think, the, I think the beauty of smart stats is that it evaluates the performance within the context of that game. Sure. So you get a two, so, so that's where Viv Richards is performances in that era, in that sort of, in those games will come across. I'm sure, sure. when we run super so, stats over one so day, I think it will be validated. The, the reason I'm stressing so much on how it, how, why it would be important for even the commentators, like Rahul says, 
who's going to make sense of those numbers and they need to accept it. From your initial questions, I think luck was the big contentious thing, you know, the subjectivity on who applies it as an opportunity lost or not, what constitutes luck or what doesn't. So I'm just thinking now, if we can maybe take this conversation just on the, the luck aspect. Players tend to view luck very differently and the, the role that it plays then say us sitting from the outside where we say, oh, this guy scored his, Hunt Steve Smith got that 100 in Pune because he had six drop chances and that's what made it. But I still saw cricketers voted as the ESPN Cricket Info test performance of the year. So you guys don't care about drop chances and whatnot. For you, it evens out perhaps. So it's one of those old sporting adages. Are you welcoming this quantification, this pioneering quantification of luck for the first time? As I Both said, you know, we've yeah. been giving the same shit to people, you know, for a number of years on television. Expunged. It's time that we, yeah. you know, add another feature shade, to it. Shade, yeah. And this is, you know, absolutely Raul, welcome. I'm, luck, I'm excited. Luck in cricket? Where do you, do you look back at your career and ever think of, oh, you know, I got lucky here or this was happened because I was lucky or are those the things that don't even come into the mind of a sportsman? I can see Sanjay already nodding, saying no, no, he was no, very I, lucky. I think you've got to, uh, you've got to acknowledge luck and you've got to accept that you're lucky. I mean, Sanjay's here, maybe I will say it, but... No, no, please say <laughs> it. No, no, please say <laughs> it. Let's go back. I mean, I just look at my own career, right? I yeah. mean, I look at how I started my career. I started in 96 in Lords. Yeah. You know, I... The only reason I played that particular test match was because Navjot Singh Sidhu decided to leave the tour. Mm -hmm. And Sanjay Manjrekar got injured. Mm. You know, I mean, we can... Now it's easy, you know, I've played a amount of cricket and... But if maybe you go I back to 96... Now, it was not actually an injury. Yeah. I just wanted the world to see Rahul Dravid. Yeah. And I've always been that kind of a guy yeah. to make the sacrifices. Thanks, Sanjay. <laughs> Finally, but, I had to leave it. Couldn't keep it, you know, it was bothering me for a long time. No, because, Can look, I mean, I wasn't... I, there's no way, I mean, Sanjay, you know, I was... Sanjay Mandrika, even if he had scored 0-0-0-0, zero, 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 hmm. he was not going to miss a test match. I mean, he was not going to be dropped from the team. There's no way. No chance, Sanjay. <laughs> yeah. It's easy to say it now, but not in 96. You know, we, this is the guy who had conquered Imran and Vakar and Vaseem and, and, you know, in Thank Pakistan. God there was no luck index. Huh, that okay. <laughs> but that's the only series that people talk about Sanjay's so great performance in Pakistan. If the luck index was there, they would have seen Ramid Raja dropping catches at second slip. Mm. And that would have been accounted for. And so, okay. so, so that's, that's interesting. Yeah, so, so yeah. like I'm saying, I, you know, I, I get an opportunity to play that game. Yeah. Um, I, I score 90, get 80 in the next game. I come back a different player. I don't get an opportunity to play those test matches. I come back, I'm, I'm back, of do, back in domestic cricket. Yes, you can say, and I, and, and I just don't want people to feel that, you know, I'm just attributing everything to luck. The five years of domestic cricket that I played before that, the number of balls that sure. I hit, all of that that I did, maybe put me in a best position to capitalize on that opportunity that I got. But I just needed the luck to get the opportunity. So it's not, I wouldn't, I, I'm of the belief that, it's not, you can't just say, I'm just going to be lucky all the time and play like that. But I think you, as a, as, and most of us and everything, will sit back and acknowledge and look at our careers and say, yeah, I had a bit of luck there. I had a bit of chance. I had you a bit of but that's a different kind of luck that Rahul is talking about. Luck from outside the cricket field. Yes. Drop catches, umpiring errors. I think the players take it in their stride because it's something that they're trained to do right from the school days. You couldn't complain to the coach saying that, you know, umpire gave me a wrong decision. He would say, why did you play cross batted? Why did you give the umpire the opportunity? So, players tend to take luck in their stride more than people watching from outside. Umpiring errors is more of fans' <laughs> angst than so many the players. So, never in a Mumbai dressing room did you all ever feel that one batsman used to always have it lucky with the umpires, never given out? No, that happened. That is not okay. luck, actually. That is, uh, <laughs> but that is one. No, no, but one, one, you never hear this one. That's, there was a game, I think, Mumbai lost to Haryana. Mm. And there was a guy who got 200 runs. Mm. Every Mumbai guy will tell you that those are the most luckiest 200 <laughs> runs and we should have won that game. And oh my God. <laughs> Any guy will tell you that. <laughs> See, like Dilip Bengsarkar would play like this and there would be a feather and the people would take a catch and how was that? And he would glare at the umpire. <laughs> the umpire would say no. Now, that's not an umpiring error. So that is why you need players in your panel to look at umpiring errors in I like light. I like that you mentioned Sanjay would never have been dropped in spite of a run of post scores. I believe No 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 I mean No no in a way that at that stage you know, yeah. Sanjay Mandreka was he was a big name, yeah. Was there's, an, a, and, and there's, a time in, drop there's a time there's a time I believe in two thousand eight, nine when you were also a half decent name, but you felt that if it wasn't for a little bit of luck that you also could have Yeah, like I yeah, I mean so if I go back to my again my, my career in 2009, and, yes. and again maybe because I was a big name, I got given that extra opportunity, and it was a it was a test match in Mohali. Yeah, I had a really bad run of, of scores in 2008 and 9, and I was struggling, and I wasn't really getting many <coughs> runs, and I was on the verge of being dropped. And maybe because I was a big name, and I got that 
extra opportunity and the extra opportunity was in Mohali. Hmm. We, we won the test match in, in, uh, in Madras when you know, Sachin got 90 yeah. and Viru got those quick runs and quick chased runs. 300 plus against England. Yeah. Against England. Yeah. I get that one opportunity against, uh, against England at, at Mohali and, and I'm batting at number three and Stuart Broad bounces me early on in my Anderson, was it? Was it broad? I think it was Broad. broad. Okay. And I, 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 I hooked. It was a top edge and it sort of just, and as soon as I hit it, I think, oh God, I'm out again. And it sort of just falls, Matt Pryor and I think the, the, the fine leg sort of running mm -hmm. thing and the ball just falls in between them. And I go on to get 100 in that game and have pretty good couple of more years of, of international cricket, including 300s in England. I'm sure if that catch goes into Pat, Matt Pryor's hand, which could have happened that day, mm -hmm. I would have been dropped. I mean, I wouldn't have gone on the tour to New Zealand. You would have been dropped. Well, <laughs> it's easy to say now, but you know, you never know. At least you, you give them a very good chance for that to happen. And so that's a, it's such a diverse view on how they've sort of you luck. But for us, it's from the outside. And I'll come to you again, Raghu. Just when you start, when you devise this and you went to luck index, that's probably one of the, I would, I would think, one of the more challenging aspects of super stats. But as an outsider, did it in any way change your view of how you see the game? You're a keen cricket follower too. But when you were applying this, you know that there's a chance the cricketers might look at it very differently. Yeah, but first, uh, you know, it's fascinating to listen to this sitting next to these two guys. My son is going to be very jealous, I'm going to say, I'm <laughs> sitting next to Rahul and Sanjay. Anyway, uh, yeah, it, it, it is. So, we are looking at it very mathematically mm. and then trying to see how do you quantify something which is, which is looking so unquantifiable yeah. uh, to a number. So, <laughs> Clearly, I think as a player, you, you don't really think about it. You have to get past this. But as a fan, you really want to know who really played uh, without a chance, right? That is always a gold standard in some sense in our head. So how do you compare someone who got three drop chances with one who got one, and then someone scored 90, another one scored 70, right? So this is a very difficult thing to quantify. So the challenge of that was very interesting for us. So mathematically quantifying something like this is a, it's a real challenge. What's Sanjay? actually going to work a lot for viewers is the forecaster. Sure. It's a very simple thing. It's been around for a while, but I can see like my son is not a cricket fan, but when he watches cricket with me, he's looking at, you know, the wasp that New Zealand coverage mm. had, winning percentage. And that is the thing for him, you know, and, and I think that is going to be the, the one that will be uh, viewed and looked at lot and people will pin their hopes on that. So, if that continues to be very accurate, I think so you have cracked it. Was that, maybe you can talk a little <coughs> bit more about forecast because like Sanjay is right, it might very well be that that's something that fans get gripped on the most, just the percentage, in, the in chances. Fact, of yeah, in, fact, in fact, forecaster was born out of luck. Yeah. 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 Because we wanted to quantify luck, that's why we had to simulate the what form. would have happened. You know, it, it's easy to say that you, was, you had six drop chances. Sure. But what was the impact of that luck? That's how the forecaster came so in. The forecaster probability, another interesting nugget is, uh, so we looked at actually traditional probabilities of uh, teams winning from different situations and so on. And so we were looking at IPL data and then we found something really startling. Up to 2015, things that were thought of as unwinnable situations started becoming winnable by a large number, right? So 40% probability of winning from a situation became close to 70% after 2015. So we are wow. talking about, uh, so I've heard this in the commentary box many, many times where people say, uh, don't worry about the number of runs you have to score in the last four overs, have enough wickets in hands and you will win, right? That is borne out actually mm. uh, by the data. Past 2015, if you were trying to score 50 runs out of the last four overs with enough wickets in hand, your probability of winning was very close to something like 70, 80%. Prior to 2015, it was very different. So, the forecaster has both the uh, uh, probability data from the past yeah. and the forecasting that we do based on the current match. And it's an average of both. So, we hope it will be highly accurate as we uh, score and more I, and more games. And I think these things will keep changing, you know, uh, because yeah. as skills improve, and that's where one of the things <coughs> that data, I think, again, speaking from a coach's perspective, sure. you know, more from a perspective of sort of you, when you have numbers, when you can show people that these are the areas that they need to work on or six hitting ability, yeah. you know, the value of a six hitting ability in T20 cricket, you can easily go up to someone and say, look, these are the numbers you need to be able to, if you want to batting in these kind of positions, we need this many boundaries. You, your boundary rate is so much, you need to up it. That challenges players to improve their skills. Mm. You know, and that's the part that interests me, I guess, in, in a lot of ways. You know? So there certainly seems to be an appetite for more data or more relevant data perhaps in sport from Rahul Sanjay. 
Raghu Mas, thank you for all the hard work that you've put <laughs> in, you, along you. with your team at IIT Madras. Sambit, last question to you, what's, uh, what's next for Superstats? I mean, we've done 2020, so World Cup is coming, so there'll be Superstats for ODIs, which is already in the works, and Raghu tests. Yes. Yeah. So maybe you, you, you're, you're kind of tied to us for the next three years. <laughs> well, maybe one last bit on perhaps the applicability of these relevant stats in 50 over cricket too, or is it something that will work more specifically, more impactful for 20 over cricket for you? I think stats will work in any format as long as you keep, make it relevant and make sure. those numbers, you know, use those metrics. You can't use <coughs> different metrics, same metrics for the three formats yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. If you can show different metrics, then yeah, I mean, you know, definitely it's going to be used. 50 overs cricket needs all the help that you can get <laughs> from outside. So that's the most boring format of all the three. So more super stats on 50 overs cricket. It's amazing. I, actually, T20 cricket is the most vibrant and most exciting format, but it has the most elements in it, hmm. you know, to the game. Test cricket, hardly anything. 50 overs cricket needs all the external help possible. The luck, the luck factor, though, would be slightly different. I'd say the luck yeah. factor in T20 would play more of a role. Yeah. Vis a vis in test matches where the well, course of five days you can always, sure. uh, the better team Chance generally to come should back win. And yes, yeah. of course. Okay, at this point we'd like to open it up to the rest of uh, the floor. If you've got questions for Rahul, Sanjay, Raghu, or Sambit, I'd also like to request all our friends in the media to keep the questions specific to what they've heard today. If you see, the journalists are very reluctant to take the mic. No, they won't. Don't since they since you guys questions. asked most of the questions, most of the questions, uh, yeah, yeah, they, we should they, go back they, there. Again, it's but just a... Down upon my can you hear me? It's a, both of you can answer this. You have heard so much about numbers, luck factor, Rahul and uh, Sanjay. Is there a place for a cricket romantic today? Were you cricket romantics when you played or even now? Can it be applied to 2020 or any other form of the game today? We're not in Hamilton days or village green cricket, nothing now. It's so I, I still am a, you know, I yeah, cricket romantic, we love it. I don't think you need to, like I said, I, I think it's, it's, it's the, the mistake we might make is we say that if you're interested in numbers, then you're not a romantic. I think that's, uh, that doesn't necessarily need to be true. I think you can be as much of a romantic of the game if you're interested in, in numbers and you find some value in it. You know, for me, uh, the romance obviously is in the game. It's in watching a great performance. It's in watching Shubman Gill play a lovely cover drive or in Prithvi Shaw play a great cut shot. And, you know, I love watching that or watching a young kid bowl a, you know, a, a ball that swings uh, late, you know, left arm seamer swinging the ball late as an under-19 kid. And I'm thinking, wow, that's, that's fantastic. But, but it doesn't mean that there's no value in numbers for these guys, right? To enhance skills. Like I said, when you're enhancing skills as a coach, I think the idea is to more and more that we can help people enhance their skills and get better and learn new skills which is more relevant to the game today, uh, the better we go, we're going to make these players. So, I think there's a place for both romance and numbers and I don't need, think you need to differentiate between the two. You've got to be careful also with too much romanticism about the game hmm. because then we get stuck in the past and don't see the changes that need to be made, especially with Test Match Cricket. So, life is about balance. So. Romanticism is fine in loving the game with passion, but also an eye open to the reality of today. Uh, so yes, sir. Sir, could I just request you to stand, please, for the sake of the coverage, just a technical thing, if that's not a problem. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thanks to both uh, Rahul and uh, Sanjay. There's a lot of talk about this workload factor now, ahead of the World Cup. Indeed. Now this IPL is coming up. What are you for the bowlers, like Bumra and uh, Hardik Pandya, who is coming off an injury layoff? Sanjay, you'd, you'd My views are a little, I know it will not be appreciated, is this is free enterprise now. IPL is capitalism at its best and I don't think there should be any outside control from cricket boards. So, it's up to the franchises, they feel very patriotic and they want to rest a boomerang and all that is fine, but I don't think there should be any uh, pressure from the cricket board to rest a certain player and who knows, you know, how much, I, somebody made a valid point, Virat, who knows who wants how much rest. How can you quantify it? If Bumrah is feeling fresh and fine, so be it. I would like to keep IPL untouched. And there is, I think, three or four weeks break with, after the IPL and the first game that India plays, which should be, I think, good enough. So I wouldn't want to interfere too much with how the IPL gets played. It's, it's a true reflection of today's society and the world. It's capitalism. We should just uh, leave it the way it is. We've got the other formats to control, you know, as cricket board. So. Again, I mean, yeah. sorry, what? No, no, yeah. what? Oh, I, mean, I just think personally people are, uh, most, most players are smart about these things. They're not, you know, I think people know how 
their own bodies and they know how they need to be handled. Uh, I, I don't think players will put their bodies on the line if, if they know it's going to risk them. But having said that as well, sometimes players need to be playing also to stay in touch and stay in form. I mean, I was reading somewhere Patrick Cummins saying that, you know, he feels that he's actually bowling better when he's constantly playing mm -hmm. rather than having rested and coming back. So each case is different. I don't think yeah. we can have a blanket case and say, no, they should all be rested or not rested. I think, you know, we just have to trust players and they know, they yeah. what, they know what they'll do. Okay. Again, just a request to try and keep it to the Superstats chat, if you can. I think we've got a friend of us from uh, Dream11, Babin, if he's here. If you'd like to ask a question. Have you all thought about uh, how the stats can be used for fantasy cricket as well, since a like uh, lot of yeah. people have started playing fantasy cricket uh, over the years? You can talk to us after the... Yeah, there's yeah. Ramesh. Ramesh, will, Ramesh could take Ramesh that. Ramesh will actually. take that. That's a question right up, uh, head of businesses, Ali. So as uh, Ronak said, the entire focus yeah. of this presentation is to basically give the content. We would also look at products which can ensure there's an interactive gaming experience to it under which falls the entire fantasy gaming oh, products, including all of these trends, including player selections, game scenarios, adaptive game scenarios basis, the data points that come in. Uh, we would also look at in markets where certain tools are permissible. By that I mean UK and other markets. Clear tools where we can have an enhanced forecaster offering and look at partners we can work with. So to your question, Bhavan, yes. We would look at uh, partnering with, and we would also look at launching some of our products on our own. Okay, I think Cricketwala has a question. Ayaz? Yeah, we'll just get you a mic, Ayaz. Just a second, please. Yeah. I came in a little late, so I don't know if you all have addressed uh, issues about fielding. But for is there anything to do with fielding that you'll have covered? For instance, in the 75 World Cup, Viv Richards, rookie player, gets four, four people run out. Uh, you know, you might have a Chris Gale who smashes 100 of 60 deliveries and drops four catches and misfields five times. Is that making a difference? Uh, it'll, it, it'll be, it's not yet part of this set of smart stats which we have built only in two and a half months. Hmm. Uh, but fielding is going to be addressed okay. later. You'll have another press conference? <laughs> that, that one you need no, to come I, on time I, for. Yes. I'll, I'll come to your farmhouse and I'll tell you. <laughs> the elite royalty of uh, journalism, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Uh, question to Rahul. Uh, you can take help of superstars if you like. I don't, I'm not sure you need them. But uh, just on your old franchise, the RCB, there's so much talk of why they've never won the IPL. Uh, should the captain, the current captain Virat Te Kohli, take any blame for it, or you think he's just not had the side? All right, <laughs> you want to leave this one outside of stump? Look, I, I, you know, I, I'm not going to just go in that, but I, I know for a fact that you know all franchises do use stats and do use numbers. I mean, no, there are no franchises now. I think we move well beyond that. Everyone's using numbers. Everyone's using stats. Some use it more. Some use it a little less. But everyone uses it. All right, brilliant. Anything else? Oh.